Hey there YouTube, PD Two Finger with a quick run through, it's going to be long, Volvo amp. So this is a class D, 100 watt, uh, think of this, it's not a tube tone machine, it's a powered speaker. So you have to use something like, I'm using a Zoom G1 or a G3, and this has 100 effects, 26 amp models, and cap sims. The G3 has the foot switches on it, it's nicer. You can turn the individual effects on and off, and it has an expression pedal that allows you to blend the effects in, which works. The Digitech stuff, it never really did that right. The Zoom models are incredible, and that's what you need. This amp, you could build it and think of it as a flat amp that doesn't colorize it at all, like a normal guitar amp has character. This has no character. It's like a powered speaker. So the control is master volume, treble, bass, and then balance. Now... I'll get to the balance later. It's a mono amp. This is a voltage. Oh, that's not going to work until I plug it in. It's got a fuse. I started out with a one, pop that, pop the two. I think there's a three or a five. Three to five is a good value when you're doing one of these amp boards. Um, and then this is a blue LED that comes on when the amp is running, and these LEDs bounce depending on how much signal you're throwing at it. There's the input. There's the speaker output, and then here is the button that I press to activate the, uh, the, the, the voltmeter for the battery pack. Now, the reason that I used a Hi-Fi EQ in this was because it was 10 bucks, and I didn't want to build a tone vendor. I have the exact same amp board in a small box with external power supply battery. It's real small. And that's got the Tone Mender, which is a runoff groove circuit. It's an excellent guitar voiced EQ that has settings where, like, set it like this to emulate a Fender, set it like this to emulate a Marshall, set it like this to emulate a Vox. And that really works well because it's, it's designed by runoff grooves. You can build one of those yourself and pair it with this. And then typically you'll either need a pedal, pedal board or a, uh, I like using the Amp Sim and Cap Sim with it. The Zoom G3 works incredibly. Um, really, really good models, and the way that the expression pedal works is excellent. So, yeah, this isn't about the G3. It's about this amp. So, how it is powered, I will get a light for you guys here. There is three 18650 times 4, and I'm running 2600 milliamp. These are 32 and 3100 milliamp. There's some extra fuses in here. Here's the output jack. These two batteries here run the circuit that does the VU meter, the bouncing LEDs. I figured, you know what, uh, keeping that on its own circuit is going to solve some problems that may have may have caused some noise, or thinking about that those LEDs dancing are draining my power, I would be tempted to shut them off, so I just put them on their own circuit. So how it works is this. There is a the side jack here you can plug a wall ward adapter into that and that has this that comes out to here the whole main powering bus this jack here goes into a switch and then the fuse and this turns on both this battery circuit and that battery circuit although there is no fuse on this one so if you want to run this off of a power supply you could take these batteries out and merely plug this jack into here and then you're, you're connected to plug the main powering bus jack into this, which terminates here. So then you can plug in a laptop power supply, like 19.75 volts, 4.5 amps, and it'll work fine. And then what, what you do, I use one of these multiple adapter cables. It's a 4 and a 1, although I only use 3. And that gives you parallel wiring. And what that means is... Uh, each one of these packs is 16.5 volts or so, and when you uh, combine them, it just gives you more current. So it means more milliamps, or the power will last longer. So here's a digital, here's a multimeter, um, and I'm going to go ahead and plug that in here. This way you can test 16.85. This is a handy thing I built. I know I'm getting off track. It's banana plugs on the one end, which go into your meter. 
and then it terminates in a DC 2.1 mil female jack with one of these barrels in it. So that's just a handy little thing that I built, you know, eBay $2 special that I threw together on a Saturday afternoon. But we're in battery mode. I've got all of my recycled lithium ion batteries ready to go. All three of those are plugged in. I'm going to go ahead and I already tested I already tested all these. I had one of the uh, battery there's these these battery holders here. There's some that have springs in them. These two have the springs in them and the other ones just have metal tabs that are bent over. And I found the metal tab ones are a little bit better quality. So if you're ordering these the difference is these come, the ones with that are just metal bent over, they're a little, uh, they don't come with wire. You have to wire them yourself. So you can use like thicker wire that comes off of a computer power supply or a lamp cable. The wire that's on these, the ones that have the springs, is really thin. And I had one that didn't make contact. Something was up with the positive. It's like a, it's like a rivet that they have in there. And it wasn't quite machine put put right it's they're they're chunky so i would recommend you avoid the, the spring terminal uh, 18650 holders and get the ones that look they just have a metal tab bent over and that terminates in a little pointy guy that you can bend over and solder around however you want so basically i've got these two again these are for the lamp circuit and these are 25 mil 2500 milliamp cells the other ones are 2600s, 2600s, and then I've got 3200s on one half and 3100 on the other half. And these are Velcroed down, so I can replace those. And they, the, each battery pack terminates in a female DC 2.1 mil, and then I'm using this CCTV, closed circuit TV adapter, to combine all of them in parallel and run all of that power in parallel three battery packs into one up to the main power switch and I'll show you here when you have the unit when you have the unit off position you hit this button here it will tell you 16.8 now my wife and I we were going tomorrow to make music at a park look at him can you behave Kita come on He's being a demon because he knows I, I don't want him to be a demon right now. We did a full day, meaning we started playing at between 11 and 12 and played till it got dark, which out here is between 7 and 9. So it was, I'm going to say 7 hours because we did take a little break. It was probably 8 or 9 hours. But we'll say 7 hours of all day jamming with this thing cranked through a 12-inch uh, Fender speaker. It came out of a Princeton amp, I believe. In any event, we ran this all day, and when we left, it was 16.8, I believe. And when I got home, it was 16.4. So you can use sealed lead acid batteries. You're, ideally, you use two of those to run this. Uh, or these lithium ion. I found running a, a four-pack of those, three four-packs to be ideal for my application. I have three of these amps that use the identical board, which is a TDA 3116D2 mono, or the, the stereo board. One of them is stereo, and that has uh, tone mender EQs, two of them that use dual pots, uh, gang, gang them up, and then uh, the other one is a mono amp that has uh, a single tone mender in it. So I wanted to try this other EQ board. I didn't feel like building another tone mender. I built three of them and just pay 10 bucks to get this LT1036 is what you need to type into eBay to find this EQ board. But it does, it only has volume, treble, bass, and then there's a balance. So we have this balance control with this other side of this. So I gained the input, I just combined the input. I wouldn't say I bridged it, I combined them. Bridging means you combine the input to the output. So I combined the input, uh, what do they call that? Mono, summed mono. And the here is the EQ board. 
they didn't send the connectors with it, which was, oh no, they, they I think they did actually on this. And then here's the amp board in blue. And that's got a, there is a Fuji on it. A, oh, all these screwdrivers are over here. It's cranked. The Fuji is turned all the way up. And then, so yeah. These two batteries run through the switch. There's no fuse for that, which I probably could have, but, and then it goes to this tiny little circuit here. That tiny little circuit there is a, it's a VU volume meter. It's for the LEDs that are on the, that blink on the side, okay? And then basically, yeah, that's about it. Uh, If you think of it as a powered speaker, you can run a power adapter over here. The This, on the output of the EQ, uh, I keep it at 5 right in the middle, but you could turn it to send more to reduce the output that goes to the LED circuit. If the LED circuit is always dimed, if it's too sensitive, this you could put it over on 7 or 8 and reduce some of the gain of the signal that's going to that. And that's what the purpose of this knob is, and aesthetically to fill it out. I would have much preferred to have a bass, mid-range, and treble, and I could have just left that one channel hanging. I could have not connected it. But to me, there's this, it's lonely circuit, it's buddy on the other side is like, rock and roll, rock and roll, what you can, you can get, rock and roll. And the other staff of the circuit's like, mm, you know, no, nobody likes me. So I, I did that some mono, and then the output of that goes over to these blinky LEDs, which is really Cylon, really uh, Michael Knight. Bow, bow, bow. It's I know this is really, but it, it, it looks cool. It looks cool. It looks like I know what I'm doing until you see the Volvo. <laughs> it's like, what's that guy playing? Cardboard amp. So, yeah, 100 watt uh, with 16 volts and an 8 ohm speaker, it's probably closer to 5 watts. <laughs> That's what somebody told me. Anyway, no, it's not. Uh, John Tech Audio and Big D Wizard or whatever his name is on, on uh, eBay on YouTube have these videos where they, they test these amps and they can tell you exactly how the amp is performing and they do spec out if you drive them with a little more power they will over spec so anyone that's going to tell you tube amp two watt is louder or class d sucks they just they've never used it and they don't know what they're talking about and you will run into that trust me people really turn their nose up at this because they're so cheap until you've played with one you see holy cow is this thing powerful for five bucks because that's what you pay it's five dollars and sixty or seventy cents for the hundred watt amp board that's in this. That's why I built three of them. So yeah, anytime you see one of my videos of me playing a guitar outdoors, it's a it's either a seventy four ninety eight chip amp or a T eight thirty one sixteen D two or the stereo one. Uh, usually twenty four volts, but I you know I don't open them up. I mean, like you could say, I, I call it a 100 watt amp because that's what it's specced out at. And that's, they're not peak watts. This is not uh, Sparklomatic flea market stuff. This is really what it does. And for me to go, it's a 30 watt amp, 38 watt amp. It's just, I call it a 100 watt amp and then I talk about this in the video. So please don't attack me. I know your tube amp is better. I know I suck. This is all me playing around in kitty town. We're not professional. I don't have a mustache, an earring, or gold chain. I'm not a real rock and roller. It's all pretend. I play with my wife. You can talk all the crap you want about me. But I love my Volvo amp, and this Class D technology has enabled me to make music outdoors since, like, 2010, 2012. We've been doing it every summer constantly. So now switching over to the lithium-ion batteries is working out really well. I couldn't believe how well they, they didn't really drain, and I'm thrilled to be using this technology. So, uh, peace.